Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and today we are going to make together um, a cozy cottage on a wooden stand um, with a what is meant to be a cedar tree. I hope you all recognize that totally and it's very different from what we normally do. We usually make um, little creatures whether they are animals or fairies or gnomes or anything like that but no, today we are going to make a house. A house with a chimney that the smoke comes out when you're making a tree and um, all of this of course can be found in the Cozy Cottage kit which is brand new on our website so do um, get the kit quickly and uh, there's a reason why you should get it quickly because in this kit you get um, a, um, a free fairy <coughs> light um, so free fairy lights with it until our stock runs out. I'm just going to see if I can find the fairy lights so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Now it's not power. It's not powered by battery because um, we want to keep it as um, environmentally friendly as possible. But it has got a USB um, plug, so you can plug it into your computer. Maybe you've got a socket somewhere with a USB port, and um, or you can maybe put it in a in a in a power pack. Um, anything like that. So the first few of these kits should have that lovely um, fairy light in there and I've unpacked one kit already and I've got everything here in front of me. So this is basically what you are getting in the kit. Let's just have a very quick look. Uh, lots of different wools, um, colours, um, mixtures and um, then of course you've got a structural core and you have a wooden disc and you do get needles you get three needles in there, but you don't get a felting mat because I'm going to show you a special trick with this um, structural core. And um, I don't know how many people are watching, but I'm just going to tell you the giveaway um, question today. Remember, the giveaway means that you um, put a, um, a comment into um, the stream of comments, hopefully. And uh, what we would like you to tell us is describe your favorite cozy moments. Hot chocolate, wine, fireplace, curled up cat. What is it? Tell us what makes you feel really, really cozy in your own home and um, how, how, how does that happen? So something, it might be completely different for you, but what is it that um, gives you that cozy, cozy feeling in your own uh, cozy home? And um, it could, I'm really looking forward to finding out what, what that might be with different people. I think with me, what makes me feel really cozy is certainly I want to be warm, um, have the animals around me. And I really love it when all my family is around as well. I don't need to be a participant in it, but I just love to hear all the buzz and the talking and the chatter. And, um, and then um, I also feel cozy if I've got some nice food to look forward to, lovely cup of tea or a nice cup of coffee. Sometimes I feel the coziest, coziest in the morning when I get up really early and I'll just take my time to drink my coffee and um, and uh, do a wordle in the morning. Just something to, uh, just just my me time that makes me feel really cozy. Right, um, let's have a look um, who is here today on, on our live stream. Um, we have got um, Cindy um, from Northern California, it's 5 a.m. here. Oh my goodness, that is definitely early. Um, Vampire Venom is there. Hello, Diane is there. Steffi, I had a wonderful time at the week winter retreat over the weekend. Bought a lot of stabbing, food, friends, and laughter. The Wilderness Center is an amazing place. Thank you. Well, Dito, to all of this, I thought it was a fabulous winter retreat. And um, you honestly, if you want to see some photos, go over onto our Facebook page. I have shared some of the makes there. It is absolutely out of this world. Please do go and have a look. Gemma is there. Hello. Um, Trisha is there. Hi, Trisha. Uh, so good to be there. Here even. Awkward prawn, hi all, jumping in whilst my internet is behaving. Oh, fingers crossed. Um, we've got Olga there, hello all. Um, Gemma is there, been a long time since I've been able to watch live. Yeah, I haven't seen you around, Gemma, so welcome back. Sandra is there, hi fluff friends. Ashley is there. Jane, hello Jane, another winter retreater. Um, good to be here again. And uh, I know you got your kit because you um, picked it up at the winter retreat. Alex is there. Oh, hi, Alex. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. And um, 
who else have we got? Um, um, curled up with the dog, says Alex. Chatting with Kirsty and drinking hot chocolate. Well, you've got all the important bits tick then. Dog, family, hot beverage. Um, Olga says, I feel cozy tending my ever-growing selection of houseplants. It's turning into a jungle and reminds me of warmer times. Oh, that sounds amazing. I love houseplants. Um, curled up with my hot water bottle and blanket, says Ashley. Um, oh, Marion has joined us. Bridget, uh, Penny Lees, uh, Karen, just for those who've joined late, just to let you know, tell us what your cozy moment is. If you feel cozy with a hot drink by the side of the fire, maybe completely different things, tell us what they are. Um, cup of tea says awkward prawn toasted tea cake with butter, fire lit and shutters closed, cats snoozing on the sofas. I like that idea of the shutters closed. I will be honest, I used to do that a lot when I lived in a bungalow and I just I just pretend I wasn't in and I felt ever so cozy inside. Does anybody else have that feeling? Um, wrapped in blankets with hot tea, says Vampire Van, usually black with milk, but I do drink green fruits and herbals. Haven't tried a white yet. Housemaid loves matcha and crafts and something to listen to. Nice. Right, I'm going to go back now so we can start the cozy cottage. And um, if you haven't seen it, I've unpacked it and there's the kit that you can get and this is what we're making. Now, um, some of you might have a, a round disc in your kit. So um, we've had, we, we, we couldn't get these uh, slightly oblong discs. Either will work absolutely fine. I can't actually remember who has got what. So if you've got one like that, then that's fine too. If you've got a round one, so be it. Okay, so I'm going to start now, going to the overhead um, view. And um, let's open this page. And so as I mentioned earlier, we're actually going to use this, which is going to be the cottage and the tree, but we're going to use it as a felting mat at the same time. So this is a first, this is um, definitely sort of making the best of all of the resources. So for this, I have to cut some strips there's one slightly narrower strip I have just measured it and um, so if you've got the instructions then um, definitely refer to that template on the back which looks a little bit like that that's the template and then there's one slightly bigger yeah. so you have you will have one white strip like that one slightly slimmer and one a lot slimmer. Now, if you put all three on top of each other, this is equivalent to a felting mat, okay? These structural core pieces at 10 by 15 centimeters, um, you can purchase these on our online shop as well. We also sell bigger pieces, which work out cheaper if you cut them down, but if you only need one, then um, do, do go and get uh, yourself one of these uh, structural core pieces at 10 by 15 centimeters. The last time we used these were for craft for cuts, where we were making the light colored cuts. Okay, so first of all, we, gone, we are going to um, make our foliage for the tree. And for this, we'll take um, some forest green and we take a smaller pinch of the um, pale green and, um, and an even, even smaller pinch of the beige. So the, the, these, the, the forest green is mostly for the tree. So if you were to split it into three equal portions, then you know roughly how, um, how much you have got. So I'm just gonna do this now because I'm gonna do three of these. I'm just jumping slightly ahead in the instructions. The pale green is mostly for the cottage, so I don't wanna uh, completely raid it, but um, you, you're going to very roughly mix this into uh, a modeled mix. So this is the, the first bit of the foliage for the, for the cedar tree. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to stab this once it's modeled, it's mottly mixed like this, maybe put a bit more brown somewhere else, it's gone completely gone, um, got mist here. You put it onto your um, felting mat and then you're gonna have to use a coarse felting needle and stab into it to sort of briefly get it stuck together. And um, of course, when you felt anything flat, you've got to lift it off the mat too. 
So you're, you're stabbing into these three mats that you've laid on top of each other, which will also become the cottage and which will also become the tree. Um, so you, you, you're making good use of everything that's in the kit and stab these together. So keep lifting them off, stab into, and they need to be sort of quite struggly. So you do want some of these uh, weird edges sticking out. So you're not shaping them specifically round or anything. You do want them to have um, bits sticking out. Just imagine the flat, flat layers of a cedar tree. They, um, they have um, some branches that stick out more than others and it gives that sort of um, yeah, quite a, um, a, a, almost like a roof shape, but not an, an orderly roof shape. So I'm stabbing into these to felt them together. Now you can stab them really, really well, or you can keep it quite um, loose like I have, but that's holding together. So I'm going to repeat that two more times now because I've got um, three layers of the cedar tree that I'm making. So just mixing that up a bit. It needs to be quite mottled. You do want there to be sort of batches of brown and batches of a lighter green. And then the main color is the dark forest green. And uh, just stuff that down, lift it off the mat, and we'll stuff some bits here. So the important thing is that you do lift it off the bat mat. If you have got a three needle felting tool or a five needle felting tool or a multi tool, then of course do use it. You, you can do that. I am. Um, oh, I'm trying to see what I've got here. I've got plenty of tools here, but I'm just going to stick with a with a single needle for now. Um, it's just I'm just going to get the three hundred. Definitely speeds things up. So if you want to speed things up, do that. But you also have to remember it will probably felt it more into the um, into the structural core mat that you're using as your felting mat right now. So make these shapes. They don't have to be round. Um, in fact, later when we attach them to the tree, they're they're sort of not. Uh, going all the way around the tree anyway, because they're like layered slices that we put onto the tree. Right, so second one done. There's one, two, and then one more. Um, the longest of all of this, uh, the long, what I found is, is making the cottage. And uh, um, I will just make that last layer of leaves, and then I will show you something that I've been working on um, today and a couple of days ago. Um, because there's something special that um, um, I, I really like it and so I'll show it to you in a minute. We've got a very special limited product on our website which um, is a is a um, is a length of wood. It's a really nice length of wood. It's a length of hardwood actually. Um, I believe it's cherry wood and it's um, not at all expensive to buy. It's only four pounds and um, I can show you in a minute what you can make um, if you make lots of these cottages, what you can do. Right. Keep stabbing that down. Remember to get your um, cozy cottage kit sooner rather than later before we can't put any of these fairy lights in there anymore. Yeah. Stab it from the other side a bit. And I think when you were at home, you would probably work this a lot more um, than what I do. You know me, I'm, I'm a fast crafter, but I also try not to make it too perfect because I'll be here for hours rather than just one hour, which is what um, our tutorials are usually. And a little bit more here, and that's done. Right, so now I have three patches of, of um, um, felted patches for the cedar tree. But what I wanted to show you is this. So, um, oh, where is it here? I have to turn it around. Ready? This is the piece of wood that I've been talking about. So once you've got the hang of how to make these houses, you can, of course, make lots of them. And you can make them in different colors. And you can make different shaped trees as well. So I haven't put the cedar tree on there. But um, this is basically something that um, I really love this idea of having all these colorful houses. You often see them made from different materials. But these are all needle felted. And maybe you can make your favorite um, house um, line, line of houses. I know there are many um, lovely seaside cities 
um, and other cities where you can find these higgledy piggledy houses in the side of the hill or uh, along the seafront. And I think they're really super fun. So uh, maybe it reminds you of your favorite holiday place or city or town or whatever. Anyway, that's um, that 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 is this particular piece of wood. They're glued onto it so they won't fall off. Um, yeah, this is what the wood looks like. It has one rounded edge, uh, actually it has two rounded edges. So, um, and it's, it's, it's very smooth. You're not gonna get splinters in your hand. It's been sanded and it looks very, very nicely finished off indeed. Um, maybe I should also just tell you, so next week is of course our unboxing and you've all been waiting desperately to see the cow. And I apologize that um, you haven't seen an image or anything like that yet, but I have her here. I have her here. And so, um, are you ready for this um, for this cow that you will be? Oh dear, sorry. I just need to salt something down a little bit because I think she's been in the wars. Okay, that's better. So this is ready. This is the cow. There you go. She has a daisy in her mouth. You get the materials to make this da daisy as well. She is. Um, She's very sturdy on her legs, but there's not a single piece of wire in this making of this cow. So um, just thought you should see her. Um, she's got um, the beginnings of an adder. I found it rather hard to needle her that. So I've, I've kept it very simple. Got a tuft of hair here and um, beautiful big eyes. So yes, that's basically the Frisian cow that's coming in the maker's box next month. Um, it's quite a playful, um, not quite cartoonish, but also not quite completely realistic um, make. And I think she would look lovely on anybody's um, sideboard or in the window with uh, some plants and, um, and especially eating this little felt daisy. Right, that's the um, Frisian cow that I needed to show you because you've all been asking for. Just gonna check in how everybody's doing. Um, so, what have we got? Um, uh, so jealous of all of those who went to the retreats as Penny Lees. All I have managed so far was a workshop at Glasgow as I live in Northern Ireland. Might be able to combine a retreat with a holiday in England. That sounds like a very good idea and I have a date for you. So the next retreat in the summer will be the 21st to the 23rd of July. So if any of you need to save up your pennies, save up your holiday, book it into your holiday, let the whole family know you're unavailable during that time because you're coming to our summer retreat at the Wilderness Centre, then so be it. You've got no excuse now, lots of time. Um, to get um, to get yourself onto our um, mailing list. So do drop us a line, info at the makers with two S's, .co.uk, so we can let you know when we've got um, details um, and when you can book onto it. Um, Bridget says, I feel cozy with a dog on my legs, a, cu um, a curled up cat next to me, a cheese and tomato toasty and hot drink, and a woolly blanket sitting in the outback in my combi. It has heating too. Nice. Sounds amazing. Laura, Laura, let's help. Um, I love being curled up on my bed with my greyhound, missing him terribly at the moment. He's on holiday, avoiding the chaos. Oh, that must be so hard for you, Laura. I, um, I hope that um, it will go by like a flash and then he can come back and um, be all by you again. What is it? Uh, what's that saying? Um, I think that doesn't apply to dogs and people, but um, something, something um, makes you fonder. Forgotten what the saying is anyway. It's probably not, not, not relevant. Okay, right. Let's get back to the um, to the uh, cottage. So my three um, layers of leaves are here. I'm gonna just put them to one side because now I need to take off that top layer of. You can see how I felted it together that thinner top layer of the um, structural core and I'm going to roll it into a tree trunk shape. So, and now I'm using my two layers to continue working with this. It doesn't matter that you've got fi fibers on here because it, gets com it will get completely covered. So now I'm using my coarse needle and I'm beginning to felt this tree trunk together. So overlaying the felt, felt, felt into it, 
structural core felt all the way down but leave a little gap open because that's going to be where the tree will be flattened out um, where the roots are and that needs to sit on the wooden disc so we want that to be um, slightly open now I'm using a coarse needle definitely a, use a coarse needle but you can also use your three needle felting tool because that will of course as always speed up the work so just felt it together it doesn't matter if it gets squished just get it felted together so that it becomes a, um, a tree trunk but leave the end open and that is it's it doesn't have to be completely solid because what you're going to do next is you're going to wrap the brown Portuguese merino which is very lovely and short fibered but gives a lovely texture you're going to start wrapping this at the top where it's not open and you can keep it quite tight with the Portuguese merino because it's a short fiber you do need to wrap it um, close to the make because otherwise you just tear it off it is a very short fiber so you can't you can't um, wrap it by ho by holding on to here you have to be really close to it and then um, when as you wrapped a little bit felt it down fasten it onto your tree trunk and of course that will also now hold the shape together a little bit more you're still using two of these mats that will become the cottage for your making so if you get lots of our little kits you'll be very appreciative that you don't end up with all of these little felting mats because um, not not everybody knows what to do with them but I will give you a tip that some of these houses here have been made with um, the felting mats that come in our kits as well so um, there's a bit of a tip here if you um, if you get into making these houses you will be able to use our felting mats which of course look like that so a little bit harder to work with because they're slightly softer but you can do it so maybe start out with a kit and then you've got the instructions and then take it from there right wrapping more of this brown wool around it but I'm not wrapping it where it's slightly open because that will become the tree trunk um, well the tree root I should say maybe the roots that sort of spread out on the surface where you later on glue it down onto the disc so just fasten that on notice how the um, slightly the whiter fibers from the felting mat are poking through I don't think that matters I think it adds texture to the tree and looks quite quite um, deliberate okay so once you've got that far then you're going to open up this part so that you've got almost like one foot poking out and um, you need to now cover that with brown as well so maybe use some shorter um, bits so lay it at the foot of the tree and then felt this down um, it's fine if it spreads out a bit because you you want to um, felt you want to glue this down on the disc later um, but also we want to just put a little bit on the back so that the tree doesn't um, doesn't lean one way or the other but the main base the main part that will show is this that will fa be facing forward on your on your wooden disc so make sure that has got um, wool attached and then just put some on the back like this but just felting it into the base of the trunk but letting it spread out a little bit like that so we are we're kind of working backwards with everything so so I think the um, somebody's just asked about the checkered butterfly uh, which is coming up as a fundraiser for the butterfly conservation. Um, the they are they've got everything now to start um, with a campaign, and we're waiting to hear back from them when they, it's actually going live onto their website. As soon as it does, you'll be the first to know, as always. So um, it should happen within the next week or so, because the um, the actual event is at it, um, is at the beginning of March. So hopefully we hear back from them um, soon. 
Right, so this is what it looks like from underneath. I've covered that bit from the top and then I've just put a little bit of an extension here that doesn't um, sit um, on that structural core felt. So that's the tree um, trunk done now. Um, and um, now I've got to attach these leaves. So if you've got one that's smaller, then I would keep that for the very top and put the biggest one at the bottom. Now, you can either tear a little gap into this like that or you might have to cut it but the idea is that you're wrapping this around the tree so you put a um, tear a gap into the into that flat sheet that you needle felted and then you're going to attach it to the tree but you want to make sure that it's sticking out to the side you don't want it drooping down and you don't want it pointing up you do want it to stick out to the side and so you can felt it in just where it touches the tree trunk from the bottom and you can do that too from the top. So from both directions, felt it in so that it's nice and secure. And I would do this, um, I don't know, I've sort of gone halfway up the tree here and, um, and then I'm going to do the other two layers in a minute. So the third layer will just sit on top of the tree but um, take the second, oh, that's definitely the next one. So if you can't tear it because you felted it so well, then just um, cut in um, a slit into it so that it, it hugs the tree trunk. It won't, it won't go all the way around, but you want it so that it's, it's, it's almost uh, um, coming around to the other side again. And, um, and then felt this also down from the top and from underneath and get that cedar tree, next layer of the cedar tree leaves, felt it down. There you go. And then finally, you have the last layer, and that last layer just needs to be put on top, like this, so that you've got your cedar tree now all nice and um, constructed. And for this, you just need to felt right into the top, so that you can fasten it on. You can adjust the leaves. You can also cut into the edge. Ow, that was my finger. You can also cut into the edges of the leaves um, because you might want it to uh, be a bit more jaggedy. That's, you can do that too. Just felt, felt it down. And of course you can adjust it because it should just um, stick out by itself like this. And, um, and that's the cedar tree I'll show you on the big um, on the big screen as well. There you go. There's your cedar tree ready to get um, ready to get glued onto the disc later on. Yeah, like that. Okay. So now, um, just to finish that cedar tree off, we can also already add the little roots to the bottom. In fact, I should have done this first. I, kn I knew there's, there's there's never a way that I I actually follow my instructions properly. So these curls, um, which are um, which could have gone onto the, onto the base of the tree um, first, but um, it's not too late, you can put them on now. And they, they imitate more of the, these lovely gnarly roots that um, cedar trees have got. They've got massive roots, really big, big roots. Um, so we need to have them there for just to, to give add a little bit more structure and a little bit more texture there. So ideally, just put them to the front because you're not going to see the back. You've got plenty of curls there. You might not need all of them, and they can even spill out a little bit more. So I've added them here, if you can see that, and that would be a nice um, bit. And I've still got roots left, so I could have added more, but I stick with these now. Right, so that's the cedar tree done. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working um, on the chimney. The reason I'm starting working on the chimney is because I need to use my felting mat. And for that, I do need my felting mat. So you've got quite a lot of uh, this lighter brown, this hair brown. Um, however you're going to turn this into a sausage, I don't. it's up to you. But you're going to roll it up um, and um, into roughly um, a, a shape of about four centimeters long. So I'm actually rolling it up um, along there. And then you're going to felt that down on your felting mat. 
there are different ways of rolling this into a sausage. If you've got another one, then feel free to do that, whatever works for you. You're felting this in the middle, leaving the ends unfelted at the moment. Just get it felted down. If you can manage to make it square like a proper chimney, brilliant. That basically means you only ever turn it 90 degrees. So sometimes people do this by accident when I teach them in workshops and I say, just keep turning it and they literally just turn it 90 degrees. When it's felted down and it's a firm little sausage, then you're going to have to stab into one end. Be careful. This is a killer for fingers. So just don't stab yourself. So you're making a blunt end at one end and you're keeping the other end unfelted. The other end will be, we tease the wisps out and it will sit on the roof so that it, it spreads out like a proper chimney. Now you've got maybe a tiny little um, gap in there, which is what I did. You take a tiny amount of this white, you've got more white than you need and just felt a little bit into it for some smoke coming out. So if you felt it so that it sticks up, then you've got um, lit literally a little chimney with um, smoke coming out. And you're going to put that to one side. Now we're ready to do the next bit. So you cut the remaining larger felt sheet into um, four equal sizes and two equal sizes. And uh, for this I'm using my template here. So I have got um, um, the smaller piece I'm going to put to one side because that's going to be the roof. Okay, so the larger piece I'm now going to cut um, so that um, I'm actually using the template here um, because you can lay it on there and you can see where it needs to be cut. So I'm going to cut into these areas here. So this is my larger piece that's coming off and then I've got two smaller strips. And then these I'm going to cut in half. So I've got two and then four the same. And now I've got one larger piece. Now this one larger piece I'm also going to cut in half. And one of these is going to be the base of my cottage. So at the end of it you have one of these left. Unless you want to make the house taller. Um, so I'm overlaying four. If you want it smaller only use three four of these and then this is going to be the base like the front doorstep if you like so i've got one two three four overlaid with a slightly longer one underneath and um and this bit sticking out here is going to be the front step if you don't want the cottage to be so tall then just layer it do less if you want it to be even taller you could cut this to size so it fits on top or it's entirely up to you what you want to do next. But the main um, thing is that from now on, you haven't got a felting mat anymore. So everything you do will be directly felted onto the cottage itself. And we're starting by wrapping um, the whole shape up with some of this pale green wool to make it stay together. So I've just started here at the bottom, all the way around, pulling it quite tight. And all I'm doing now is I literally stab into the whole cottage because I need to now stab the green wool onto the layered um, structural core pieces. But at the same time, I'm also felting the pieces together. So they all will be become they all will become one continuous shape. And this is basically just to show you a little bit close up. This is the cottage there. Um, so I'm working on this part at the moment. Don't worry about this. It's just this part plus the little front step here, which actually turned into a front garden. Um, so that, that part here is this slight overhang here. That's where we're going. Okay. Um, so you're only felting into the pieces that are overlaid now. And you're going to add more wool. You've got plenty of green wool to cover this up because you're going to cover all of it so that it um, becomes one shape. So you're also going to have to go around the front and the back. At the moment I'm, I'm doing it in a, in a sheet but there will be 
pieces probably that I have to felt um, where I have to add little bits of wool separately. And I'm going to felt this down. Try and keep the um, edges of your cottage nice and um, nice and um, sharp. So don't round them off. Um, they will be rounded anyway. You can't help that. But you, you won't need a felting mat for this. You will be able to just literally step into the cottage because it's nice and deep. You don't need um, a felting mat right now. If you feel happier, you can, of course, rest it on your roof, which is going to become the roof. But you don't need to do that. You can. Okay, so stop nice and deep because you want those um, all these layers to felt together. And you want to get a nice smooth surface, especially at the front, where you have to add the door and the windows and um, those kind of details. Make sure it stays nice and flat at the bottom because that needs to sit on the on the piece of wood and you need to sit it you need to have it sitting really flat. So don't add any more wool to the bottom. Just um felt this nice and flat so that it's really a nice and um flat surface that will sit without being wobbly or wonky. Right, I'll let you catch up for a minute. Um, I'm just going to um, tell you about what's coming up over the next, other than the, um, the un unboxing next week, what's coming up. Um, and we have got, oh, let's just look at the, um, so the next live streams are the sub box revealed, which is the, the cow, um, the crocus fairy and the um, forest floor surprise box and then we are going to make the fox cup together this has been a kit that we designed last last year and uh, we haven't ever done it so this is a good time to do it especially as there will be um, lots of fox cups out soon um, come spring and then um, on fri on Tuesday Valentine's Day the 14th of February we're doing um, the teddy bear with a big heart so um, get your kits for both of those now because they're available to purchase and um, I have got them here as well so there's the fox cup there we go and there's the teddy bear got everything in it to make um, either project including the felting mats and the needles very similar to the cozy cottage um, in terms of, of, of uh, contents and uh, instructions okay um, let's have a quick check-in with the chat so um, what else have we got here Oh, uh, Penny Lee says, my cozy moment is sitting down with a cup of tea when I have returned from a, fa a family dog walk at Mau Mount Stewart. I don't know Mount Stewart, but it's, I'm sure it's very nice. Everything must be nice in California, especially the weather. Um, uh, that we've just had Laura feel cozy. Oh yeah, no, we've done that. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm never reading in the right order. Uh, Penny Lee says, so jealous of all those who went to the retreat. All I have managed so far. Oh, no. Oh, hang on a second. I thought you were in northern. Oh, oh, I'm confused now. Penny Lee lives in northern Ireland. Somebody else lives in, in northern California. Sorry, I'm getting you all muddled up. Uh, just ignore me. Right, going down to the to the further down. So let's just forget about this. Um, uh, oh, hello, Jay Choi. We've got here exactly your description. Hot chocolate, pot of tea, biscuits, cat fluffy wear and blankets, candles burning. Oh, nice. Yeah, candles. That's a good one. Um, and a good film to watch. Oh, yes, that's good as well. A fireplace if I had one. Mm, I'm, I'm with you on this one. I don't have a fireplace currently, but we used to have one. That was lovely. Um, I always think when I when I think oh I wish I had a fireplace I always think oh well it's not that great for the environment so then I feel better but I don't really um, what kind of tree is being meant well it's meant to be a cedar tree a cedar tree like a big swooping tree um, Bex has joined us. Afternoon all tree looks amazing. Only just been able to tune in. You can always rewind. This tutorial stays on um, our YouTube channel and it will be repeated on Thursday at 7 p.m. on our Facebook page where you can watch it almost live 
again. I feel cozy when you're all surrounded by loved ones and wrapped up in a nice blanket with a nice hot cuppa, cup, cuppa in front of the fire. Nice. I think we're all like the same things. Uh, nobody's come up with anything that I wouldn't go for yet. Alison says, hi everyone, only just made it. My cozy place is in front of the fire with a hot chocolate after walking the dog. Uh, Vampire Venom says, I've been thinking of making those teddies to add to my charity donation pieces. If I sold enough, I would in a heartbeat, I would in a heartbeat as they make toys that don't exist for sick children. I feel there's a, a word missing, but I can't think it. I would in a heartbeat. Oh, I see. If I sold enough. Oh, I see. Okay. So, um, t share with us what your, um, what your, uh, charity, charity donation site is. And then, um, put it on the chat here. And then at least the people who, who are on the chat can see it. Okay, right. Let's go back to, um, the job in hand, which is the cottage. Okay, so we've got as far as this. And I'm going to cover a little bit more with the green. You can probably make two cottage with uh, the amount of wool you've got in there. It's definitely loads in our usual maker's generous style. We don't want you to run out of wool. So you had uh, some more um, structural core, you could probably make two. Or if you made it taller, then you would use a bit more of that green, obviously. Right, so let's felt this down, and then we're going to the next step. So as soon as we start on the roof, that it that it means that we definitely don't have any more um, of, of, of the felting mat left. So if you do need to make your little front garden and you don't have any other felting mats, then what I suggest you do is fold this in half, or you could even put this on top and then get your little garden um, prepared. Now the garden mostly consists out of um, brown wool and um, and um, the colored flower wool. You can let it spill out a bit and just glue that onto the, onto the um, um, piece of wood. I'm just literally going to make a path and then a little surround and then I'll put some of this lovely colorful wool in the, in, in the gap for um, a, a colorful uh, cottage garden. There we go. So at the moment it's fastened itself, itself to it, but it looks a little bit like this now. More here on the side. So the white is covered. This is not according to the instructions. I'm just giving you ideas of how you can felt the garden before you run out of the felting mat because you've still got um, all of these mats to use. And then all I'm going to do is pick the, some really nice colorful bits out of um, the fairy mix. That's what that wool is called. Put it in there, felt it down, job done. Put a bit of green in there if you want. I've got some for no, uh, no, I don't have any forest green left, but um, yeah, you can probably use maybe you can t tear off a tiny bit from the tree if you are desperate for some green in there. There, that's all I'm going to do. Okay, so now I've got to um, make the um, the roof of my little cottage. Um, in fact, I'm starting with a door in the instructions. So let's follow the instructions. I'm going to take some of that brown, that was the tree trunk brown, and I'm going to felt the door straight onto the cottage. Now, the way to do that is by, by sh putting the square shape of the door, felting that into the wisp of wool that you laid onto the front of the cottage. And if you just consistently keep going in that um, rectangular shape, the wool will um, pull in exactly in the right in the right places. So you can make the door literally to measure as you're stabbing into into it here. And then if there's a slight gap, you can add a little bit more wool into it, um, or maybe it's okay. Now our cozy cottage has got lit up windows. So uh, windows that are lit up uh, usually have a, a yellow a, a yellow shine. 
because the, the lights inside um, make the, light, the window light up like that. So what we're doing is instead of putting the window frame in first, we're putting the yellow light into it first. So there's a tiny, tiny little window in the door, which is going to be interesting, getting that in there. Just stuck the yellow in. This is all working on quite a miniature scale. So at some point I'm using my um, coarse needle, but at some point I might have to go to a um, medium needle or even a fine. And now I'm going to try and put a tiny, tiny little window frame in there by just having a cross in this running in the center of that yellow um, light. This one and now they ca it can sp spill into the door. Um, so you don't. It doesn't matter if 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 it exceeds the, um, its its sort of window frame because the door is brown as well. So that's quite um, convenient. So there's my little window door, and now I've got to make two more windows. So um, I'm using the yellow again. On the camera, you might not see the distant difference between the yellow and the green so much, but I'm pre-shaping this a little bit with my fingers just so that I've got um, a size that fits into the gap here. And because I'm going to put the window frames in in a minute, again, it doesn't matter so much if it's not that precise as long as the window frame is um, precise. So just use a little bit of that. I'm folding it into a, tri into a square, which is what that window shape is. And then I'm folding it down. Mind your fingers when you're working on a small scale like this. And now I'm going to put the window frames around it. So the, the shape is not that precise for the windows, but because I'm going to put the window frame around it by just twizzling the brown wool and tease it out into a strand. I can felt into it like this and turn the corner so stab into that corner a bit more to keep it square make sure it doesn't get rounded and turn the corner you can make I haven't done this but you could make the windowsill a little bit more prominent in the brown wool teasing a little bit longer see that and then felt round the corner again. I'm just going to go round again, just the top because that's very thin. So that's the window frame done. And just take that off. And then I'm going to put the crossbar in. So this time I need to be a little bit more precise because I can't spill outside the window frame. That's one end in. I would put the ends in first, either end, because um, otherwise when you felt into it, it would pull the end away. So one and two. Tiny, tiny amounts of wool. Get the ends of, the, of that crossbar in. So we've also got um, a pastel wool mix, um, which is, is, is new. But I, I asked my colleagues at, um, to put it on because you could use that to make sort of the pastel colored houses. It's not exactly these colors, but they're very similar. So if you, if you wanted to, um, to get the right wools for um, these, these colored houses, there is again just a limited number of packs available. We've just made up so many, I can't remember how many. But um, they are 50 grams of wool and um, um, they are... Um, they're seven pound fifty, and that ob obviously is only valid um, whilst the whilst the um, wool is available. And we are today is the twenty um, fourth of January, two thousand and thirteen. Uh, two thousand and thirteen. What the heck? Two thousand and twenty three. Where did that come from? That thirteen. No idea. Okay. The makers weren't even established in two thousand and thirteen. Going around the bend. Here again and again making that window frame. 
So I'm using the needle almost like a stake in the ground when I turn the corner um, with the brown wool so that I uh, um, the corner is nice and sharp. And then I've just got to do two more crossbars and I can start on the roof. A lot of detail goes into this, more than you maybe expected. So even though it is a very simple construct, it's actually quite um, elaborate what you've got to do. Um, but I think it's definitely worth doing the details, um, especially if you're a detailed person and like miniature things, you'll love this. Because just think how what you how different, when I made the other houses, I started to, um, if you look a little bit closer up, so I've given them white windows because that looks like the, um, like there's no light on inside, white window sills, you could have flowers going off it, a white door with um, with the wooden um, grooves in it, uh, a red door frame. Um, yeah, I got a little bit carried away, the different colored chimneys, different color smoke, um, different color roofs. It, it was really fun. Then um, some of this is actually, I used pre-felt for this roof because um, I thought, oh, let's try that. And, um, and then I did a different shaped tree here as well. So you can, you can um, get quite creative and inventive with, with these subtle details, but there's the little house now. It's got its doors, um, its door and its two windows. And now I've got to do the roof. Now for the roof, we take that remaining strip of core felt and fit it on top of the cottage. Now it looks ginormous at the moment, but um, remember, that um, the, the roof is overhanging on the side. So what you're going to do now is you need to just briefly fasten it on. So get it on so that the sides hang down the same uh, distance and, um, and then stuff into these um, where you know you're gonna hit the roof with the cottage below. So stab it on, so just so that you've got it into place. So literally just along a line. That's one side fastened on, and then you want to do the other side. There. There are many ways of fastening this roof on, by the way. Um, this is just one suggestion. If you find a better way that works for you, go for it. So now I've got the roof on. Now the roof will look slightly rounded at the top, but we are going to um, um, change all of that in a minute. For now, what we need to do is we need to put... Um, the, um, it's a thatched roof, so we need to put the straw on it. And you've got lots and lots of this lovely brown. And to do this, you're going to lay this onto the side of the roof, and you're going to felt it down. Now, if it exceeds the end of the roof, don't worry too much, because you can um, cut it off. But just get that felted down, and that will also establish um, um, more of a hold into the cottage, because you're still stabbing into that side. Um, you don't want the roof to get um, too attached at the very side where it's um, meant to sort of like stick out a bit because that's the shape of the roof. So make sure you um, peel that off again. And if, if, if this is sticking out too much and you, and you can't get rid of it, you can felt it underneath it or you can just cut it off. There, cut it off. Okay. Um, it is meant to look like straw, so it can look a little bit um, coarse and doesn't have to be felted down very smooth, so that's what I'm trying to say. And um, then you can, later on, we're going to stack more into the gable of this roof, but right now it makes no difference because we've got to put um, the filling into the roof as well. So cover the other side in exactly the same way. You can, of course, have the roof facing the other way, so that you've got the, the slope of the roof at the front. Like I say, there are many, many ways of how you can uh, make your cottage. This is just this kit is just the beginning of hopefully a very exciting um, uh, town that you're building, or village that you're building, or street, or little um, little hamlet. Um, I look forward to seeing it all and everyone a maker on our Facebook group. Um, um, which if you're not, if you haven't joined yet, please do join the group so that we can um, see your makes that you um, create from our instructions, our tutorials, our kits, our books. Um, maybe you've come to a workshop at a show, any of it. 
you still got that felt piece, now might be a good time to just step right into that roof gable to sharpen it a little bit. Um, though it will go flat again in a minute when we, or round again in a minute when we stuff the roof, which is what we're doing next. So you can use um, the green to stuff the roof. Um, just a wonky, so I'll make it, straighten it out a bit. Um, but if you want to keep the green to make another cottage, you can also use the um, the brown. There we go. So this is the roof at the moment. It's hollow. But I'm going to use the green. Um, and at the moment, all you're doing is you're just stuffing it in there. Okay, so we need to fill that roof up. Don't stuff too deep because it will only come out at the other side. So have it sort of that it, you've got two ends stuffed, basically. A bit more here. And what you're going to do next is you're going to fold a piece that will fit into there, hopefully perfectly. So um, you can do this like that, just fold it up and shorten these wispy fibers so that you can felt that into this roof space. Um, I would start at the front because then you can adjust the back accordingly and make sure you don't get your windows covered because you can now from the back you can push against the front so it's not like your um yeah so get that filled in and then do the other side do the other side here Let's step that down a bit to make it a bit more space and then fill another. So all I'm doing is I've got a flat piece, fold it in half and fold the edges in to make a triangle and then I fit that in there. And then let the fibers ever so slightly run over the um, cottage part. My roof's attaching, de detaching itself so that needs a bit more felting on. Once you've got that roof filling that will also help to get the roof attached a bit more firmly because now you can step properly into that loft space to get it in and um, and felt the cottage um, gable part down. So what, what you want to do is um, you want to make sure that the front looks the smoothest and the, and the um, most complete. So I'm just going to work a little bit more on this roof to get it fastened on because stuffing it makes it definitely round at the top again and also pushes it off the construct. So you now can work a lot better, a lot more by getting that fastened down. So you can see this side looks much better than the other side. Get that fastened down properly and focus on the front of the house because that's what is important, um, what needs to look right. And now we're going to bridge that gap that's sort of popping open here, as you can see, um, by just using, if, 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 if it hasn't done this, by just you putting that top in, you can use a little bit more of the green wool and just spread it out so that it's just felt it down above the windows. Don't cover the windows up. Felt it into the roof like this. You do need to do a lot of stubbing here because these parts need to be joined together. If you're struggling to get the parts to join together, then add more of the roof uh, wool, because that will obviously reach, if the more wool you've got on the roof, the more wool you have to reach inside the roof space. So you can, um, it will tangle up inside, going through that mat, it will tangle up inside the loft area. And then do the same on the other side. These are just tips that um, I, I'm sort of handing out, noticing that some of um, I haven't I've used very little wool on this cottage compared to what is actually in the kit. So there's nothing um, wrong with you really, really getting more wool onto that roof and um, getting that um, loft space felted down properly. Getting that space filtered down. 
because you don't want it to be wibbly and wobbly. And then you can go over that part here again. So once you've got the, um, the shape of the roof and the loft space done, um, what I'm finding here is that every time I put it down, the roof gets pushed because it's, ex it's pushing out, um, it's not flat. So I'm actually very tempted to just cut this a little bit to stop the, um, the felt get being pushed forward every time I, look, I lay it on its back. I think that is what is the problem here with mine at the moment. So I'm just going to get that felted down. I've just cut a strip off because my house is a little bit too slim for the size of the roof to work it comfortably. That's better. So on the front of the house, I'm now going to um, add a beam, a wooden beam across the joint where the roof attach touches and where um, the loft, it's basically the gable space. I think that's the right terminology. I had to look it up because I'm not a, a builder, so I have no idea what these things are called. But I, um, here, that bit here, you can actually um, make a beam go across so it doesn't look like you've got an unnatural attachment. So just felt a little bit of brown across for a wooden beam. Still need to felt into that loft space there. And then you can put a little window into the top as well. Um, and for that I've used the dark brown as well. And I, you can do a, a round window or a square window, whatever you want. I've just put a little round window into the loft area up there. Still have to go around the edges to get that roof fastened on a bit more. So just be aware that takes a lot of stabbing. Oh, maybe I should use my thing. Oh, that's so much better. side as well. So the, the, the most important thing is that you're going to get that pointy part of the of the roof um, um, done now. So you need to start very much at the edge. Get that um, filled out a bit more. So stop at the edge as, as much as you dare before you come out the, the other side and that will make it more pointy. So there's your little cottage, um, which is now actually ready to receive its chimney. So the chimney we've made earlier, um, you tease out the ends of the chimney like this. And then uh, you attach it to the side of the roof, but obviously you don't want it sticking out like this. You want it pointing up. So make sure that whatever you're felting down, um, you're felting it down so that it's pointing up at a right angle rather than leaning sideways. So it needs to go straight up, but the brown wool is there to attach it. So that's what it does now. It's pointing up and the smoke is coming straight out. And that little cottage is now ready to be um, positioned on the on the desk. Now I've got loads of loads of wool left. I've been very generous here again. So you can now decide where your tree and where your cottage is going to go, um, which way round you want that wooden desk. And um, the idea is that you're going to use generous amounts of glue to glue it on. What I would do is glue the tree and the house on first and then um, use um, the other wool to decorate around it. So I, I'm just going to show you the finished article so you can see what I'm talking about. So we've glued the house on first, so it's not actually sitting on, on the wool. It's sitting directly on the wood, and then we've put the wool around it. That's not felted on, that's just laid out around it. So whatever you want to put around it, I've used up all my, um, all my wool. Um, of course, you can also just add it into the row of cottages that you're making. There we go. So add another cottage into here. Um, but in any case, you just use generous amounts of glue glue the, um, I'm not going to do this right now because um, it's going to go on the, on the big screen. So there you have it. Um, have your cottage. Um, glue, glue it on directly onto the wood 
and then decorate around it with um, the wool that you've got left over, whether it is that lovely colorful wool, maybe you want to put a bit of brown in, um, there's some of that green left, you can mix the wool, can add some curls and go, go very um, steady on the decoration because you don't want to over overwhelm it but this is basically your or maybe you don't want to do that at all maybe you just like it as it is but that's your full instruction of how to do them this is what it looks like from the back um, the tree I've, I've made sure that it's sitting so that the roots are facing forward so that um, you see most of the tree um, from that um, angle and um, and that's basically it so you can make your own little cottage um, that was the one that I made earlier. This is the one we've just made without the decoration. And remember, if you do like these kind of um, 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 houses, you can make lots and lots of different ones. I really love, I really love the um, this look um, because I've seen, I've seen them, and uh, those different coloured cottages all higgledy piggledy next to each other. It's a very typical um, site, um, especially in England. I don't know so much about Wales or Scotland or Ireland, but certainly I've seen them in England and um, I'm sure you'll put me right if I'm wrong, if you can get them anywhere on the British Isles. But um, So we have got a couple of other people entered into our competition, uh, which is Annette Davis and Laura Pegs. Um, we will draw a winner at the end of this month. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'm just going to check if I've missed anything that I'm meant to show you. So we've done uh, the sub boxes. Oh, well, these are the next sub boxes coming up. So we've seen the freezing cow, the crocus fairy, which I've got here as well. I'll give you a quick, a quick glance. Uh, then we've got the moon gazing hair, a bunny fairy, and the make along. Um, the, um, a make-along surprise box and um, the make-along surprise box is going to be a pink lan landscape so we will be doing this together um, wild boar for April iris fairy and whatever the weather for the surprise box I just want to also tell you that um, we still have got crafty boxes left I think um, maybe not all of them but we have got quite a, it's not coming soon it's still it's still here and these are crafty box bundles uh, where you can get creative in the darker um, winter months get your uh, creative juices flowing maybe sitting together with the family we're waiting for the days to get longer and this is a good way to feel really cozy um, and then finally um, the leopard workshop at our new offices new premises <coughs> excuse me is planned for um, for the 3rd and 4th and 5th of March that's a Friday Saturday and Sunday every day from 9 30 to 4 30 and it is um, it is now 17A, Unit 17A, the makers on, in, on the Nelsworth Mills estate. We've got two prices, um, one per person and then one bring a friend. <coughs> Excuse me, get in touch if you're interested. Um, and it's without accommodation, but obviously you get everything to make the leopard and it is a, a fantastic 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 make I'm just going to get him out so I can show him to you in real um, in real life here on screen as well so get ready for this amazing um, creation and Joan is a wonderful artist and she will teach you things that you never even knew um, existed so please do get in touch however I've said it before and I will say it again I don't envy anybody making all these spots on um, on a needle felted um, creation but look at that detail look at the tail um, it's just fantastic and it's really solidly felt as well with the details of the whiskers and um, the eyes are needle felted as well just absolutely amazing so if you're interested in this March. Um, in fact, the, there's, the eyes are needle felted, but there's also um, eyes in there, but I don't know how she's done them. I'm sure you'll find out if you come and book onto the workshop. It's a wire armature, so you will learn how to... Oh, I've just got to leave him here now. He can eye up the cottages. Um, so yes, so that is, uh, that is on the cards as well. So get in touch if you're interested. Uh, we are uh, in the full flow of taking bookings now and I know that people are making inquiries about you doing this online I'm telling you now 
do it in person. It is just not the same online. Uh, having done the retreat, having seen people, giving them tips, talking to them, literally showing them things that they can see in 3D, it is so different from uh, from online. Online has got its place. I am absolutely a great believer and a fan of it, hence on, uh, me being here. But do get um, do get yourself to this workshop and experience it in full body and, um, and soul. And that's all I think I've got to say. Thank you very much everybody for watching and um, I will see you um, next week. <laughs>